everybody, Gina DeLuca here. I'm back. Uh, yes, I have been gone for a minute. Uh, my mom was in the hospital and she lives on the other side of the country. So I had to basically just drop everything and head over there. Um, she's doing much better and uh, we're all very happy about that. So I am back and going to try to claw my way back up into the algorithms again. Uh, please, please make sure you like and share. Subscribe if you have not already. If you are subscribed, make sure you click that bell. Only 7% of my subscribers uh, are receiving notifications when I put up new videos. You have to click the bell to do that. So, uh, yeah. Today I am going to be doing um, a spiral straight pour with a limited palette. So this palette in the Fluid Art Inspiration Cards. So these two boxes can be used together as, as a color palette, uh, as a limited palette, or you can build off of those colors. So that's the color choices that I'm doing today. Uh, if you have not seen the Fluid Art Inspiration Cards, well, to just do this part, get it out of the way. Uh, what they are are 52 cards. There are 42 technique cards and each technique card has an associated video here on YouTube that gives you all of the information that you need. The exact paint brands, the colors, the consistency, of course, the technique, all of the things that I can't fit on a card. Um, this is the picture of the painting in that video. This box here contains a tip for that particular technique. And here at the bottom, you have the color palette that was used in this painting. Uh, and then of course, these two boxes can be used as the basis of a two color palette. And there are eight bonus color palette cards. Each one has five color palettes. You can use all of the colors or just some of the colors, mix and match the bonus color palette cards with the technique cards. And you have more combinations than you could ever paint in a lifetime. These are available at my website, ginadeluca.net, and also at amazon.com. So the colors that I'm using today, for my blue, I have Liquitex Basics and Thalo Blue, to which I have added just a tiny bit of the Artist Loft Soft Body White. I just wanted to brighten that up a bit. Um, I didn't want it to dry such a deep blue. I wanted it to kind of pop next to that copper a little more. And the Deco Art Americana Decor Metallics in copper. The Deco Art Americana Decor line, actually most of the Deco Art line, uh, make great cells. They're fantastic for creating cells in a straight pour. When you use a matte paint, which is how the deco art paints seem to dry, um, whether it says matte or satin, uh, it still has a tendency to be more matte than the Liquitex Basics line. And when you add a matte paint with a paint that's not as matte, it doesn't have to be a gloss paint, just has to be less matte, you get cells without needing silicone. It's wonderful. I am, oh, let's get rid of that shadow. I am a Deco Art affiliate, so if you wanted to get yourself some of these paints, head down to the description box and uh, you will find the link there and I will receive a small commission at no additional cost to you. And also there is a coupon code there, so go check that out. The first thing I'm going to do is lay down a bit of a base coat. Actually, usually the first thing I do is pour some into my cup so I don't underestimate how much paint I'm going to have for my cup. I'm trying to reserve a bit to put on top. I like to have a little to put on top of my cup because those cell makers just seem to come right back up to the top. And I like to make sure that all of the cell making paints have an opportunity to react with my background color. 
which in this case is the blue. The background and the base coat are the same color uh, when I do it. I use the same color, but the base coat is what goes on the canvas. This is the base coat. The background is the first color that goes in the cup. And I call it the background because the cells kind of pop through and they seem to uh, rise to the top and then the background color kind of falls to the background. Okay, so now I'm going to put my paint in the cup. Oh, I guess I should have told you guys. How did I mix these paints, you may ask? Uh, these paints are mixed one part paint to two parts Floetrol. They are then thinned to the consistency that I want with my concoction of 90% water and 10% Floetrol. The consistency that we are working with is about two on my consistency scale. It is making a mound, but it disappears very quickly and it is making a nice thin stream off of my stick. It needs to be a nice even stream or you have not mixed it enough. Always check your consistency before uh, you put it in your cup. The sauce may thicken upon standing and uh, I'm going to pour from up high. I want these paints to sink. I want it to churn. Sinking is kind of key because you want those cell makers to react. Okay, so you can see it's kind of starting to billow to the top. So I'm going to take what is left in my cup here and just go over top. Now this may be a little less paint than I would normally use for this size canvas, but it's okay because my background is the same color as my base coat. More schmutz. And this gives me the opportunity to use the base coat as negative space if I want to. This is still enough paint to cover this canvas. Don't get me wrong. If you spin it enough, it will get there. Because the canvas is already covered. It's just going to keep expanding. It's another benefit of using a base coat. Okay, so you can see that copper is trying to pop up again already. So I'm going to pour quickly spin slowly and I'm spinning clockwise and I'm going to do my best to stay in the center see how I do if I pour quickly and spin slowly that will give me more of the spiral effect that I'm going for If I spin too quickly, I will just get a ring pour, which is not a terrible thing. You can make some real nice ring pours, but that's just not what I'm going for. And how you allow it to come out of the cup is going to really change things. So right now it's kind of doing this wobbly back and forth thing that you may not be able to see, but that's going to kind of give these little fingerling effects. And as always at the bottom of the cup, I have some of that cell maker that's gonna be nice and bright, going to give me a great focal point in the center, regardless of what happens elsewhere. And because the center is the center, it's going to get stretched a lot. So you always wanna be super careful with the very end because that is going to be your focal point. 
And what I strive for is one and a half turns with that extra bright color at the end of the cup. The one and a half, that's the golden ratio, your spiral Fibonacci ratio. All right. My Fibonacci is looking pretty darn spectacular, if I don't say so myself. I will toot my own horn every now and then. Mostly in regards to the Fibonacci. <laughs> we know the struggle. That dismount, that's a tricky thing. Okay, so what's happening here? I am popping the bubbles in my pour and what's happening is those bubbles are lying underneath in that copper paint and when i pop those bubbles it brings some of that paint with it and because these paints are hydrophobic there's a hydrophobic effect that takes place when you put a matte paint with a glossier paint. And that just means that it is pushing the liquid away. So as these cells come up, these bubbles come up and create these little tiny cells, it has that hydrophobic effect and it pushes the other paint away and it has a chance to grow. This is how you get those big, juicy boulder cells. Um, typically, the boulder cells, I, I would use two cell makers, and they kind of blend together and give this very 3D effect. Um, but you can see the formation here. This is These are boulder cell formations. So I'm gonna keep popping these bubbles, allowing this paint puddle to percolate. You'll notice I'm avoiding the center when I'm popping the bubbles. I don't wanna mess with that. I, I like the way it looks. I don't want more random cells popping up in there. So I'm gonna to try to keep that how it is. And I'm just gonna to torch where I want more cells to pop up. And patience is a virtue here. Allowing these cells to pop up and develop before you spin will give you a much better bolder cell effect because it gives you the opportunity to stretch them even more. I could absolutely uh, spin this out right away and still get cells. But what I'm going to get are more of the pop-up cells. Some people call them pearl cells, but they uh, are pretty uniform in size. And I really like with the boulder cells how it has this very organic 3D kind of effect. And I don't know if that contrast is really showing up on the camera, but that copper is popping on that blue. Okay, I think I'm ready to give this a twirl. I don't mind some negative space. I think the center will be able to stand out on its own. So just wanna make sure that my center is centered.
Okay. One more pop. I see more bubbles. Okay, that's it. Let's give this baby a twirl. Remember, you don't have to spin it fast. It will get there. If you've ever had a painting that wasn't level, you know how much paint can move over time. Okay, now see this edge is kind of coming over faster than this one. So I'm gonna move it in the direction that I want it to go that will pull the centrifugal force that way. And that'll give that other side a bit more stretch. Think of it like when you're on that playground merry-go-round thing. The closer you are to the edge, the more it's gonna to try to pull you to the edge. Let me just put down a bit more. I have a little left here, I might as well use it. Maybe freshen these edges up a bit. It might help it slide a little bit better. Sometimes it can get a little bit of a skin and it makes it harder to spin. Not to spin, but to stretch. Remember to pop any bubbles you might create when you do that. Okay, who needs it now? Still the side. Even if it takes a while, it gets there. Patience, patience is everything. Still very heavily coming off of those sides. I will make it even more exaggerated. Oh, now we're making that noise again. <laughs> oh, this spinner. It's quirky. I don't know if I want to do that because I like how this looks like it just fades out. I was going to add a little there, but now I'm kind of debating if I want to or not. 
going to be just there because that will kind of even this out. It's, it's not spreading quite as evenly as I would hope. And that's one of the things, you know, when you use, it feels like you're using too much, but it's better to use too much than not enough. And this will just give it a little bit of something on these, on this corner. Even it out a little. It's very subtle what I just laid down. It takes however long it takes y'all. However many spins it takes to get there that's what it takes but it'll get there this is if anything this is a lesson in perseverance and you know when you know that your calculations are good it's like it is technically enough to cover you just have to give it a good enough stretch enough of a spin take a little bit what is left and just add a bit of a zhuzh up the corners a little. It doesn't take a lot. I'm making a mess. That's what we do here. We make messes. Okay. So still this corner I think needs This looks scary. I'm going to fix it. Don't worry. It'll be okay. I'm leaving that corner. Okay, so I kind of just want this to be a hair more blended. I don't want those corners to be popping quite so much. That came out, it came out hot. The rest of this looks fine. There we go. And another spin.
So originally I was like, oh, you know, I'll use less paint and have um, more negative space. And then when I got there, I felt like that wasn't really what I was digging. So, you know, you call an audible, go in with a plan. And if the plan does not go to plan, then you just work with what the paint has given you. And you just kind of overcome the obstacles. Bit more, tiny bit more. And you'll see when you cover these edges like this and then spin it again, it kind of blends out and it doesn't look like you did that separately. Okay. If you have a side that needs a little bit of love, just go ahead and touch it up. But I think, I think we're there. One more, one more for good measure. Okay, that's it. That's good, I'm happy with this. corners a little touch up remember to come in and take care of your drips as well that is very important because the drips will keep pulling paint as it's dripping down the side it'll actually pull it from the top so uh, make sure you grab your little spatula clean it up I'm gonna take this off the spinner and do that, and then uh, I'm gonna bring you in for a close up, back in a few. Okay, here it is. You can see these colors together are crazy. They both glow. That blue looks like it's glowing, and the center looks like it's glowing. Really, really cool combination. And these areas that are kind of darker. You can still see that copper flash from the right angle. It's hard to hard to get the right angles. But all of those cells have that bling. But not like the center. The center always gets the extra, the extra bling. Super cool. Uh, do check out the description box below for uh, links to my Patreon. Join us on Patreon. We have Zooms every week uh, where we have Q and A's. I help you through, you know, whatever issues you might be having. Sometimes we use the, the hive mind uh, to come up with ideas if someone is struggling with something. So, uh, you know, we also kind of talk about whatever things are going on that we just, Kind of need a little help processing, uh, especially any any art related stuff, but also the things that kind of keep you from doing your art and how to how to make it work. So, uh, but yeah, lots of uh, good stuff to be had in those zooms, and there's also exclusive content on there. More to come. I got hit with some curve balls recently. I was supposed to have an auction this week and, uh, you know, so I'm getting there. Baby steps, right? <laughs> okay, so also check out the description box for my affiliate links. DecoArt is one of them. Uh, anything that you purchase, if you use those links, I receive a small commission of it, no additional cost to you. Also, you'll find in the description box the link to my website, GinaDeLuca.net, where you can find my art and music and the Fluid Art Inspiration cards for sale. 
And the cards are also on Amazon, of course. And last but not least, you will find the link to our Facebook group, Go Make Some Art. Join us there. Post your masterpieces. Ask your questions. Get some inspiration. A good time is had by most. It is the internet after all. Okay. Well, I think that's it for me for today. Oh, and stay tuned for the trailer for the uh, Fluid Art Experience where I'll be teaching in Seattle in April, along with a bunch of other very talented artists. Uh, the trailer will give you lots of good information. And it's coming up right now. I hope you all have a beautiful day. Now go make some art.